I don't know if you've experienced anything like that or not. Maybe not to that degree, but maybe you've experienced love for people now that you wouldn't have had before. Now let me tell you that there, there is a tremendous difference in Christian people and non-Christian people. The Christian people have the love of God in their heart. They have to run over the witness of putting you first, loving you more than themselves. They have to run over that in order to do you wrong. Whereas the world, they could care less. They have not that check in their spirit. They don't have that in their heart. And so there's no conscience there to cause them to say no to it and to buffer it. All right, you with me? Mm -hmm. So, in light of that, if I had to go to a doctor, I sure wouldn't go to a secular. I'd go to a Christian doctor. Why? Not because of the name, quote, Christian, but because the heart has been circumcised by God, and that man or woman has been changed from the inside out, that God's love now dwells in them, which is compassion for other people instead of selfishness and me first. Now, I'll tell you, I've worked in the business world for a long time. I'm probably twice all you guys have been in and, or more. And, and so, in the business world, people, if they're called on the carpet for something, unfortunately, sometimes in the Christian world, but they have to run over the witness to it. But in the second world, they're called on the carpet for something. They don't try to, uh, they don't fess up to it, accept the blame, try to repent, like we as Christians we do. They instead lie, cover up, uh, blame everybody else. Well, that's not the love of God. They don't know how to change that, though, because they don't know the love of God. They only know survival mode. Now, that's what you guys came out of. It's what I came out of. It's survival mode. Me first. I've got to take care of me because ain't nobody else going to be. That's what we're always taught in the world. But God says, hey, I cut that away supernaturally, and I filled you with love. Love for other people first, and you last. And so your decisions that you make in the business world, in church life, in personal relationships, now is governed by that. And if you don't abide by that, then the Holy Spirit checks you for it. In other words, convicts you. Not condemns you, but convicts you. And you have to make a decision if you want to run over that conviction or if you'll go ahead and, and yield to it and allow God to be God through you. Well, that's walking by faith, by the way. That allowing God's love instead of your selfishness to prevail is really, that's the real word of faith, walking by faith. You know, word of faith, I shared it, I don't know, last Sunday or Sunday before, I talked, just a little portion of it was that the word of faith is great, but faith that we teach and, and major on is not, the important thing of it is not to be able to get me things. The importance of it is to walk in love, to walk by faith instead of by sight, so that I can give myself for others. Isn't that what Jesus did? I mean, he had everything, right? We all agree. He had it all. But he came from that and walked as we walk with many of the limitations we have. And so much so that even when we were all sinners, he went and took all that penalty of our sin on him with the beating, the, the, uh, the people ridiculing him, hanging on the cross. He did all that in our place. Now that is pure love. Okay? Well, he also calls us to do that which is the real walk of faith, okay? We say we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, how are you with your relationship? Okay? Because according to your relationship, the scriptures say, if I can't love you whom I see, how can I love God whom I can't see? I mean, that's paraphrase. In other words, my relationship with you, because you have God in you, is a direct 
relationship of my love walk with him. Alright? That and let me tell you, living in a facility like this, where you're close together all day, all night, that is a real challenge to your love walk. No question about it. Especially guys. I mean, you know, we're you're all guys and you know, it's just difficult. But I'm telling you that if you'll get hold of love, allow God to be God, exercise your faith in the love walk so that you're victorious in that realm, then you can call those things that be not and they become out there as far as your needs go. Because this here is the real where the rubber meets the road. It's how you love one another. How you love, period. All right? Well, the love of God is ours by faith, by the Holy Ghost that was given to us. Okay? Everybody here saved, right? Everybody saved? If you're saved, then the Holy Ghost did it. Correct? Had to be an act of the Holy Ghost. Correct? Yeah, sure. Jesus provided for it. He went to the cross for it. But the Holy Spirit makes it effectual in your life. When you ask God to save you. Alright? So, the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, the love of God is shed into our hearts by this Holy Ghost on earth. So we have the love. It's a matter of what we do with it. Alright? Let me show you. Look in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Correct. Somebody read verse 6, please. For in Christ Jesus, righteousness, for, no, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through what? Love. Love. Anybody got another translation you read?